Hey, welcome to Flash Body Mechanics 5, Lifting, Weight, and Balance. So let's open up our project file. All right, so inside this project file we have our shot comp. Let's get inside. I won't go over all that, We've, it's the same in every file. And then inside our shot comp we have our character with this block here. So let's just go right inside and start blocking this out. So I'd like to show you what we're shooting for. So we're going for something like this. All right, so I'll just break this down for you. So he goes from his default pose to an anticipation. We're just going to do a small antic, and then he's going to come down, grab a hold of the block with his elbows bent, and then reef up on it and really try to pull, and realizes it's heavy. So he's going to do a second antic down, and then with elbows bent, knees bent, and then he's going to he's going to lift it this time. Settle back and rest it onto his chest, and then anticipate, and he's going to give it a toss into the air. Way and made a little bounce on that cube. And then after he tosses it, he's going to come back. He's going to do a little squash, come back, and some overlap with the arms, and settle. There's one thing I want to mention before we start blocking. The cube is a four, it's four layers down. It's the fourth layer down. And that is, I sandwiched it in here in the layers so that it's uh, behind his left arm so that he can grab this block. All right, so let's just start blocking this out. Let's give it a six frame hold at the beginning. So let's go for the anticipation. Let's do, let's just do a four frame anticipation. By now you guys know how to set keys and, and you're familiar with our workflow where we're going to uh, block in our basic timing and posing and then make the adjustments later. And then when we go to refine the animation, we fix all the in-betweens. All right. So let's go ahead and, uh, giving this, our mannequin and, uh, an antic back. It's just a small anticipation. The bigger the movement, the usually the bigger the anticipation. And we don't always have to anticipate either. Um, sometimes you can just slow in or slow out of a pose. Just that sometimes we, for a slow movement, we slow into a pose. So this isn't a huge movement. I mean, he's going to bend down, but we don't want to anticipate him up and back too much for this action. It just doesn't really call for a huge antic. All right, so something like this should do it. Uh, we want to get his head looking down. As I mentioned before, the characters uh, always want to look down or they want to look in the direction that they're going to be heading. So if they're going to grab something, it's great to have them looking at it first. And I'm going to incorporate just a little bit of skewing here. We don't want to overdo it, as I've mentioned before. So select the entire character and put the pivot at the heel, one of the heels, and then just skew a tiny bit. We don't want to overdo that. So it starts to look, look funky after a while. All right, so that should be a good anticipation right there. Just going to scrub back and forth. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start him into his lean. I'm going to get him about maybe a third of the way down. And then in one frame, I'm going to pop him uh, right down to his, his pose where he grabs this block. So I'm just going to give it two frames down the timeline. And I'm going to bring him right about there. So F6. All right, so let's grab. We're going to start bending his knees here too at this point. So let's grab uh, the upper body, the whole entire upper body and the, and the legs. And let's just set this pose. Okay, so this should be good for this pose. Uh, I just noticed that I keep selecting this box by accident, so I just want to lock that for now. All right, so he's about halfway down. Let's go only one frame over on the timeline. And let's just set an entire new row of keys. So this next pose is only going to be uh, posed one frame apart. So he'll pop down, but it'll be the pop won't be so noticeable because we're easing in this. This is going to be an ease in, and then he's going to pop, and then it's going to e then he's going to ease into his final pose where he's holding the block. All right, so let's set this one. We'll change the torso to three. All 
All right, so we're going to actually have him start to take a step here. So when he gets to the to the, uh, to the next pose when he's grasping the block, his foot's going to be behind, his uh, right foot will be behind it. So we're going to start him into a step. Okay, so we have that pose set. Okay, so since he pops into this pose over one frame, we're going to add a bit of an ease after it, just to hide it. It really works well in Flash. By easing him into it and then settling him after, uh, it sort of hides that. All right, so on this next set of, on this next pose, um, he's gonna, we're gonna bring him all the way down and grasp this block. So we're just gonna get his knees bent a little bit, extend his arms down, and we're going to plant his hands, one on each side of this block. And But we're going to leave his elbows bent for now. For the next pose, he's going to try and lift it. And the arms will be completely straight. So for this pose, he's just going to plant his hands onto the block. So I'm just going to set the cube to outlines. So I can watch what I'm doing with the hands. I'm going to change this hand pose first. Sorry, I'm just going to go back to the last pose and change the hand. So I'm just going back to the last pose for a minute. I didn't want this foot to be all the way the, uh, this far. We're just going to actually start to swing it. And then the next pose will actually plant the foot and the hands. Okay, so if your hand doesn't reach the box, we really need to, we really needed to. So we're gonna select the entire upper body and just. And you guys can move one piece at a time if you like. I mean, it's up to you how you how you move these uh, symbols around. I like to select multiple pieces so I can get it all moving at the same time. That way, it ensures that you know joints stay together and stuff like that. So about to bend them down just a little bit more, and then we have to adjust the arms. All right, this this should work. So your timeline should look something like this. Actually, here we went two frames apart, and then on the other ease we went one, two, three frames apart. So let's just drag this out, make these even. All right, so we have our anticipation. Have him about a third of the way down, and then he should pop to something like this, where he's almost grasping the box, and his hands sort of anticipate the grasp, keeping the left leg planted and the right legs uh, in a swing. And then our grasp pose, where he's going to grasp the box and the right foot plants, and the left leg stays uh, stays still. Left foot stays planted. All right, so let's give it about five or six frames. We're just going to give him a small motion uh, downward, just to carry out, just to continue the momentum of him leaning forward and grasping the box. So what we're going to do is just uh, keep this pretty simple. We'll just grab his upper body. Um, we're going to not select the hands because we want them to stay planted. And just move the pivot to the pelvis and we're just going to rotate him down a little bit. And just make sure the wrists don't come off the hands. And what we could do is, I'm sorry, I'm just going to undo that stretching. We can just bend these elbows a little bit more. He's just continuing to move down a tiny bit so that he continues with the momentum that he had on his way down. And then after that, he's going to uh, pull up really hard. And the force of him pulling is going to cause his, his elbows to be completely straight. And we're going to have his upper body move up a little bit, but we're going to bend him. We're going to straighten his, his arms out completely and bend his knees a little. And he's going to look up because that's where he wants to go. He wants to go in the direction of up. So he's going to uh, look up with his head 
as he as he's trying to pull this this cube off the ground. So let's go just about uh, two frames on the timeline. It'll be quick. So he's gonna pull up really fast. So two frames on the timeline. That means we only have one in between, and we're gonna pose um, our character pretty far apart from this drawing, from this pose. The next pose is gonna be pretty far apart, but over only over two frames. So it's gonna be a quick movement. Again, we wanna keep these hands planted so we're not gonna select the, uh, the hands at all. And just rotate it just enough so that we can get the arms straight. And we might even stretch them out a little bit. Okay, so this is good for this pose. So in two frames, he's gonna do this, and then we're gonna we're gonna give that pose a lot of cushion. Let's go about eight frames down the timeline, so he can slow into this pose. All right, so we're just going to deselect the hands, and we'll bring the pivot down to his heel, and we'll just stretch him out a tiny bit in Y, and maybe a little bit in X. Okay, so we have to bring that foot back. Since we uh, squat, stretched him out a little bit, you can see his foot sliding, his left foot, we want that to stay planted. So let's just bring it right back a little bit. There we go. So just make sure that that left foot stays planted. And we can just be skew our leg over a little bit. There it works. Okay, so now we got to stretch the arms out a little bit because we stretched them. But we, did, we left the hands still, so we'll just stretch the hands a tiny bit. So that's going to be our subtle ease. So we're just going to slow out of that pose just a tiny bit to, throw, to show that he's really struggling. And we can even lift his head a little bit here. Every time you set a pose, you really want to uh, scrub on the timeline. Just scrub back and forth and see how it's connecting with the last pose. So if I watch the whole thing now, we can see him anticipating. So let's continue with our blocking. Okay, so let's go two more frames down the timeline. We're going to do another quick movement. We're going to have him anticipate again for a second time. So let's just copy our last anticipation pose and we'll just change it a little bit so it's not exactly the same. And we'll paste it here on the row of keys that we just set. Select the entire row and paste frames and get rid of this needless row of keys their keyframe. All right, so we're back to this. So he's going to struggle. Gives the struggle and then he's going to anticipate and this time he's really going to this time he's going to lift it for sure. So he's really determined now he's this time he's he knows how heavy this thing is because he already he already tried uh, lifting it once. So we're going to change this antic up just a little bit because we don't want to have all scrubbed through. Anticipates, tries to lift it, struggles, and then we don't want to go right back to the exact same antic. So let's just change this up a little bit. Okay, so I ended up bringing him down a little bit lower than the last antic. A little more bend on his elbows, bend on his knees. He's he's come down really far. He's going to give it, this time he knows how heavy it is and he's going to give it his all. All right, so we're going to get him back into a pose similar to this, but we'll bring him up a little higher on the next one. But first, let's slow into this a little bit. We'll give this a little bit of a squash. And that'll give us the impression that we're slowing in. So we'll just get his entire body and put the pivot point at the, the planted heel. I'm going to squash him down a tiny bit and stretch him out a tiny bit. And if we scrub over that, it's just going to, um, going from this pose to this pose, he's going to anticipate and just go down a little bit more just to cushion it a little bit. 
and then we're going to go two frames down the timeline or let's you know what let's try doing one frame because this is going to be really quick he's going to snap upwards so we need to pose with him with his arms extended again as he's lifting he's, as he's lifting this weight um, and we can actually copy this one let's go back down the timeline and find it uh, it's this pose here we can copy this pose but we'll bring him we'll just modify it a little bit as we've done before so we're using poses is very very powerful here helps us to block very quickly copy frames and we're going to put it right on this this row of keys that we put next to the last one paste and we'll get rid of that row that flash bumps over their keyframe okay so now we have the last pose we set and we just copied this one now what we can do let's bring his body up a little bit so we'll just modify this so it's not exactly the same as the other one and so this will give us better timing as he's it will move his body um, further away from the last pose all right so now we can start blocking the cube out a little bit we've come to the point where the cube's going to start leaving the ground which is this pose this will be the first pose where the cube leaves the ground so we'll bring it up so look in the last pose, you want to keep um, keep an eye at where his hand is on this cube. So we can see it's oh, just right about at the edge here. And his fingers are a little more than halfway down. So on the next pose, we're just going to bring it up to approximately that area. So I'm just going to use the arrow keys and tap it up. So this is going to be really rough right now. We'll, for, we'll refine the cube later, but we just want to get a general idea of where it is according to our character. So let's go two more frames down the timeline and set another key. And let's look for something we can reuse. What we want to get now is something where he's standing upright, but he's going to settle back a little bit with the weight. The weight's going to carry him back as he as he lunges up. Uh, the momentum will take him back just a little bit. So we want to get something close to the upright position. Since we want something close to the upright position, we'll just copy the default pose where he's standing perfectly straight, and we'll modify it. So he's going to do that in two frames. So we'll get rid of this row that flash creates for us. Clear key. All right. All right. So he's going to do from here to here in two frames. So luckily we haven't moved that left foot, so it stays planted. Okay. So we want him almost upright, not completely upright. We'll still have him leaning forward a little bit. We can drag the head a little. Okay, so between here and here, that's going to be a quick movement. If we think about how he's, how you would lift up a heavy object, once you've gotten to this point, you've already put your energy into it. The energy is going to be in the legs. So we're going to lift him up. Once we get to a more upright position, the momentum of us lifting with our legs is going to bring the block up a little bit. And then I'm planning for this to uh, land back in his chest as he leans back. So the, the momentum of the lifting action is going to bring the cube up a little higher. So let's bring his arms up as if he's holding the cube up a little bit higher than his than his ribs, let's say. Okay, really he's putting all the energy to lift this, uh, this cube with his legs and back here. And then it transfers, the energy transfers to the upper back and arms at this point. And now he's got the block up at his chest and it's going to, the momentum of the block is, is uh, bringing his arms up. And now it's going to start to bring his body back on the next pose. So let's give that about five frames because that'll be a settle. He's going to settle into that. So we're just going to lean him back a little bit. And at this point, his upper body is going to relax a little more and he's going to get a better grip on the, on the block.
So at this point, we're going to bring the block right up on his chest, up almost close to his chin. As he settles back, he's going to rest it on his chin, on his chest. Okay, so let's adjust the hand, the arm positions. Okay, we won't worry about the other for, uh, forearm right now because it's going to be behind the cube anyways. Okay, so he settles, lifts it up and settles. Let's give it about four frames. Just a bit of an ease. And we'll keep, select just about everything except for this cube. Let's bring the pivot down to his left heel. And we'll just settle him back a little bit. We'll adjust the cube later for this. Okay, so we settle him back. It's actually really good Let's to give him a little bit of a bend in the knee. This will help to communicate to the audience that this block is really heavy as he's settling with it on his chest. It's causing him his knees to bend a little. So we'll just scrub over that. That'll be a nice ease. Move the head a little bit just so everything isn't too stiff. We don't want we want to avoid stiffness. Now that he's settled, we can hold him for just a beat. So I'll hold him for eight frames. So right after that settle, we're just gonna have an eight frame hold. So just set a row of keys, and then we'll go down the timeline. Let's do four frames, and we're gonna anticipate him, and we're gonna bring this his left leg back. That's the leg that's been planted the whole time. You can use the energy in that leg to push his body forward and help him with, with tossing this cube. So we'll go four more frames down the timeline. So we have the leg kicking back and the elbow, left elbow kicking back a little bit. That's going to help with the anticipation. And then we can have his, we can tilt his head down a little bit. Let's do an ease on this as well, just to help with the momentum. Let's just do maybe three frames. The weight's on both of his legs. We'll put it on this heel. Actually, we'll put it on this toe. So just going to give him a slight ease. Okay, so this is just going to be really subtle, and then he's going to toss it. So let's give him, let's give him two frames down the timeline to throw it, and we'll go into an extreme pose. So we're just scrubbing over our work to take a look at what we've done so far. All right, yeah. So this foot uh, moving over is a step. Uh, we should have, we actually have to have a, a pose that where his leg is, uh, his foot leaves the ground before it makes contact. So let's. We could do it in our in-betweening, or we can do this now. It really should be a key. So I'll bend the entire leg, even at the at the hip and at the knee. We won't key an entire row for the entire body because we're only moving those three pieces, So, but that is a key pose because it defines the main action. We're going to bring him into a pose where his body is going to be at about a 45 degree angle towards screen left, and he's going to be launching this, this cube. So let's just move it out of the way for now so we can start posing him out.
All right, so let's go with something like this. So these two poses are, are uh, only two frames apart, but you can see that the drawings are very far, the poses of the drawings are, are very uh, spaced far, very far apart. So it's gonna be a quick action. And we've created the energy for this quick movement in the ease. Um, as he settles back here, it eases. So he's getting ready and he anticipates and then he lunges it forward. So the next step here is to, let's, now that he's uh, tossed this forward in this extreme pose, um, we need to get him, uh, we need to carry that momentum through, continue the momentum of, of this motion down into a squash pose and we're gonna drag the arms and hands up a little bit. We're gonna pose them up for some drag and he's gonna squash down into a, a bit of a squash pose and then he's going to settle. So let's give that three frames, maybe f let's do four frames for him to get from this pose into his squash pose. Now let's see if there's anything we can reuse here. Down the timeline, I think we can reuse this pose. All right, so let's just copy that entire row, copy frames, and go to the row that we keyed already where we're gonna put our squash pose and paste it. And like always, get rid of these keys, clear keyframe. And it's great because the right foot is planted right where we need it to be. So this is fantastic. All we have to do, of course the block went back there. We copied the block as well, no big deal. Um, but all we have to do is um, drag these arms and we can see our previous pose. And we'll put a little bit of a drag on the head as well. So by dragging the head, um, by giving the head and arms some drag will give us the impression that they're they're heavy and they have weight to them All right, so now we can now I'm thinking we can put him back into his default pose But we need to get from here To here So we'll copy in the frame one uh, over to the end But really what we should do is give some sort of in-between pose going from this pose to the default pose um, first of all if we only set um, if we don't put another pose in between those two we're gonna have to fix, do a lot of fixing in Flash. So actually we'll just set a key pose. Let's say one, two, three, that was three frames. This should be a fairly even movement. It gets us in between our previous pose and the pose we're going to set next, which is going to be just uh, the default position. So let's copy frame one. Copy. And we want to slow into this last pose. So let's go eight frames down the timeline and we'll select the row and we'll paste it. Copy, uh, right click and paste. Get rid of the extra keys. Okay, so for our last pose, we're gonna we want to settle into this really nice. I know we gave it eight frames. We might have to decrease that, but let's give it three. Let's give it four more frames for a settle, and we'll bring the the one we copied. We'll bring it just a little bit closer to the previous pose. So really, just gonna be a tiny bit. We're just gonna tilt the head a bit. We'll just bring the body down a tiny bit and to the right, just a little bit closer to this pose, but not anywhere in between. And we'll just break the elbows a tiny bit. Break the wrist a little. Do the same thing on this side. And it would be extra sweet just to give him a tiny bit of bend in the knee. Okay, so let me scrub over that. It's just a really subtle ease into the final pose. Let's take a look at all three of these for a moment. He launches this block. He squashes down into recovery. His arms are going to drag and we can see the head has like a nice arc to it here. The head motion as he settles back up and eases into his last pose. All right, so we pretty much have this blocked out. Um, let's grab this cube that he throws around and we'll block in the animation for that. So let's unlock it. Let's get rid of our, uh, turn off our onion skinning for a few minutes here. All right, so he tosses it. All right, I'm gonna put onion skinning back on. Okay, so as soon as this block leaves his hand, 
the thing that he's throwing, whatever you have him throwing, whether it's this block or something else, as soon as he it leaves his hands, um, let's go to the cube. Find the key where it leaves his hands. All the keys after that we can get rid of. If you've been doing it the same way I have, just clear the keyframes. Right at that key where it leaves his hand, that's the last key but that we're going to have keyed with the character. Now after that we can just go ahead and just start animating this cube uh, however we wish. So it's going to be something like the, if you think back to the ball bounce where we eased in and out at the top of the bounce, the drawings were spaced close together but the keys were spaced far apart giving lots of in-betweens. So we're going to give this uh, three, we'll give it three poses at the top of this toss and then we'll bring it down quickly. So I'm going to go from the last uh, key of the block, let's give it uh, three, four. One, two, three, four. We'll give it another four frames down the timeline. So we're going to have three in-betweens in between these th next uh, two poses. We'll bring it here and we want to give it a nice arc. Arcing motion, so we'll bring the next pose down here. So there's going to be an arc to it as it hangs at the top, hasn't gained velocity, and then as it gains velocity and speed before it impacts the ground, we're only going to give it two frames. Set a key, and then on that key we'll have it hit the ground. So this will be very quick as the drawings are spaced far apart. And now I'm just going to set a few keys that are only one frame apart. So on the next frame, it's going to set a key, just like we did with the block in the previous exercise. It's going to bring it down a bit, set a key right next to it, give it a bit of a bounce, and I'll bring it over to the rotor left a little bit as it still has momentum from the toss. It's still moving screen left. So this is the impact pose, and then it shoots up. I'm going to set a key and give it a very subtle ease into the top of this bounce. Move it to the right a tiny bit. I'll set another key and we'll bring it back down. So if you look really closely here. Alright, so you already have a really good impression of what's going on. Let's tween this whole thing and we, we'll get a better sense of what our timing looks like and we can make some timing refinements then. So we'll just play that. Okay, so that doesn't look too bad. So by this time you guys should be uh, pretty well versed in how to fix these sections in between your key poses. So I'm just gonna start with the section in between our first pose and our second pose. So let's go in a little bit closer. Just gonna scrub through and check it. Looking at the joints as usual. There's no uh, symbol swapping here. And that looks fine. It's just a small anticipation. Okay, so between the next two poses, we just have a subtle elbow breakage here. So we'll just select the lower arm and we'll set a key. Okay, so these two, in between these two key poses looks okay now. So it's just the process of going through, scrubbing in between two key poses and looking for any joints breaking or looking where you need to add a little bit more drag to any any limbs. You could even play certain sections and make sure the timing's working and we can make adjust, uh, timing adjustments as we go through and refine this as well. All right, so I'm almost halfway through and you can see that I haven't had to really make any uh, adjustments in between these key poses. So things are working out pretty well. We did a good job setting our poses in this one. You can see the eases are working really nice. Okay, so we have a little break in the lower arm here. So we're just gonna do uh, also the torso as well. So we're just gonna set a key for the torso and lower arms and anywhere else we need to make an adjustment. So just select it to find where the layer is, set a key and we'll put that back to where it's supposed to be. Now I want that hand to stay planted, so I'm not going to touch the hand right now. And we'll set a key on that lower arm and just shift it back so that the elbow doesn't come apart. And let's get that torso. So we have the lower arm coming apart in between these two. So select them to find where the layer is. 
So I'm just going to set keys on all the in-betweens for the lower arm and hand. And then go through and fix each frame on the of the in-betweens. Just for the lower arm because it's the main problem here. Okay, so I've, I've fixed the elbow, but now I'm looking at it, I'm scrubbing through and I'm feeling like it's okay that his hand slides forward. So we're just going to refine this uh, hand to give it a bit of arcing motion for it to get to the front of the cube. So that's looking a little better, and now we'll just fix the forearm. Okay, so that should be good. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so we put in this hold as we were blocking. Now it's really static, so I want to give that just a little bit of movement. All right, so what we can do is just continue with the ease back. So this is the point where he's got it up on his chest and the weight is bearing down on him. So let's actually just give him a tiny bit of movement and we'll bend him at the knees a little bit. That'll really help with the impression of weight. So we'll just bring his upper body down a bit and give him a little bit of a bend in the knees. All right, so now if we scrub over it, just play it. That hold's looking a little bit better. It's now a moving hold. And let's go between the next two poses. So this is where he steps. We're going to just adjust where the symbol swap happens. Foot swaps right when he gets to his pose with his foot back. But let's let's swap that foot mid motion, just so it hides the, the swapping of the symbol a little better. So right in between those, we set a key when we were blocking for the top of the step, or for when the foot raises up to, to go back. So we're going to uh, swap the symbol right at that point. I mentioned this before, it's always best to swap symbols in mid-motion so we don't uh, notice it so much. I'm just going to use the onion skin outlines just so it's not so hairy. So we can see from, from one pose to the next, our foot raise should be more in between these, these two extremes. So let's bring the entire foot over and we'll bend it a little bit more. And we'll see how that looks. There we go. So when we play it, we don't see the, the symbol swap as, as much. These next two poses are only uh, one, two frames apart, so there's only one in between to fix. And it's mostly with the arms. Uh, the knees are coming apart as well. Okay, so we have a few things to fix here. We need the head, the head and neck. So we'll select those, place a key between them. So let's fix our arms. So let's select the lower arms to find the layer, and we'll place a key in between those. Okay, so the hand's flipping. So what we're going to have to do is copy the hand from the previous key. We'll just copy it to the center and move it back into place. Okay, so now for this pose, we want to get that hand on the block a little bit better. So let's just go ahead and make those refining adjustments. Okay, so we have to fix the right arm now. I'm also noticing that the block is going right behind his left shoulder. We don't want that to happen. We'll fix that at the end. Okay, so I'm just going to put the cube, set the cube to outlines so I can select these hand and arm pieces. So that'll be okay since the rest of the arms behind the cube, you won't see it. Okay, so now we're going to come down to our squash pose where the arms are, are dragging and he's recovering from his, he's recovering from launching the cube into the air. Oh, I just noticed that the knee is breaking here on this pose, right in between here, so we're going to fix that. All right, in between the next two poses. So I'm actually going to improve this pose a little bit. We have the arms crisscrossing over each other. I think this would be better for the silhouetted pose.
All right, so we set a bunch of keys in between these two key poses for the lower arm and hand just to fix this, this pose change that we did. All right, so this is the next key pose. And then we just sort of put a breakdown pose in here to get him into his default. And it looks like we have just the right elbow breaking apart. So we'll select these guys. I'll just set some keyframes in between those two. I'm just going to play this now. So that settle at the end looks okay. All right, so I'm just going to go through now and play the entire thing. All right, so now let's fix the block. Okay, so as he's settling back here, let's get in a little closer. As he's settling back, I notice that it's it's sliding. It's not really sliding with him. It's sliding away from him. So let's bring that in. We can bring it right up against his shoulder. Okay, so let's go to the next pose and it's sliding away. So let's bring that up against his shoulder again. And then scrub between the next pose. And this is the one where it goes into his shoulder. Let's just keep it right against his shoulder and not go behind it. So it's okay that his hand slides back. Keep that against his shoulder. And he launches it. So I'm just going to go right about in the middle and just play this. And the toss is good. And the landing's okay. So let's play the whole thing. I don't really need this tween at the end. Okay, so now if we want to, we can use Flash's ease function for some of these movements. Uh, I wouldn't put them in anywhere where you have a lot of uh, in-between fixes. But anywhere where the, there isn't any fixes and we want to add ease, we can do that. This entire section uh, in between our key poses, we can select this. We'll go in the properties under ease and we'll go right to 100 with that. So if we scrub over that, it should ease in nice and slow. Okay, we can do it with this one as well. When he settles back with the block up against his chest, we'll just ease that right to 100. And that'll give him a nice, just an extra nice cushion or an extra slow cushion at the end of it. All right, so save your file under a different name, export me a QuickTime video, and we'll get you some feedback as soon as possible. So that's it for body mechanics. Uh, the next section is acting.